This is a normal grip and this is a massive Jumbo Max grip. And this is the grip which is gonna be going on all of my clubs. But why? Because that is quite the departure. So this is a Quest for the Open video. And the Quest for the Open every year, I go through the process of trying to improve my game to get through to the Open Championship. And so far, it's been going pretty um, badly. But one of the reasons for that is I've just not been able to practice as much as I want. My wrists are just constantly falling to pieces. And with a big grip like this, studies suggest, and I have been testing this for about a month now, that with a thicker grip, it applies less pressure through the hands, you can grip it lighter, you can increase club head speed, and it just offers a whole host of wonderful things. But if you wanted to change grips like this, it is gonna have an effect on technique. So this is how I would normally grip a club. It goes through the fingers, my left hand wraps over, so I'm seeing two and a half to three knuckles on my left hand. Then my right hand wraps over, and I want both of these of my hands to be pointing at my right shoulder. Now with a big fat grip like this, as it goes into my left hand, it's gonna be running much more up through the palm. When it runs more up through the palm like this, that's gonna cause my left hand to sit on the side a little bit more, so in a weaker position. And I'm gonna to have to add some flexion into my left hand to keep that club face square. But here's the key. When I've been testing it using that grip and that technique, I've had less pain in my wrists when I've been practicing and that that is the goal. So to regrip my clubs, I headed over to Trafford Golf Centre, where American Golf very kindly allow me to use their re-gripping room. So to regrip a club, it's fairly simple. You need to remove the old grip. Now you should use a little hook-like implement so you don't damage your shaft. Unfortunately, couldn't find one, so I had to use a Stanley knife. But I just nicked the end of the grip, opened it up, and then I managed to pull it off with my immense bear-like strength. After removing the old bit of grip tape, I set the club up on the machine and then put the new grip tape on. This is very simply just double-sided tape. As you can see, the workbench I'm using here is quite fancy. It's got a panel at the back you can line the club face up to. It's also got a see-through ruler-like thing with a line in the middle of it to make sure the grip is lined up properly as well. Then take the grip, coat the inside of it with white spirit or some other kind of solution that fits that description, coat the double-sided tape in it as well, and then calmly, steadily, and as I discovered quite difficultly, slide the grip on, straighten up using the alignment aid, and then give it a tap on the floor. And hey presto, that's how you regrip a club. Everything's moving together just a little bit too much. This back at the top there. You're going a little bit forwards. Yeah. Okay. And then if you watch it, because of that, your knee's staying just a little bit too straight for a bit long. But okay. because of that, your left wrist almost can't naturally sort of uncock, if you like, because that left hip and left shoulder need to be going upwards a little bit through the ball. Watch what the left knee is doing. It stays bent for a bit too long. Mm -hmm. So therefore, the wrist is going to have to stay a little bit in flexion a bit long, which will put a bit of pressure through it. Granted, those grips will help you a lot. Yeah, so just soften the right elbow without pulling the shoulder and see what it does. Yeah, that's better. Right, okay. Now, take that to the top, okay? From the ground and here, move towards the target for me. Okay, and separate, and there you go, good. Right, now from there, just let that left leg start to open up and make your movement through the ball. I'd like you a bit more there. Okay, do it again. So across, so it glides across, now let it extend, there you go. So this bit can move, to, there you go, just get, get move that bit towards the target a bit more. There you go, keep going now, and then let it, do you feel different now? Right, okay. Yeah, so feel this bit here moving towards the target. There you go, keep going now. And then it'll extend, there you go. So that left wrist actually started to naturally unload that way a little bit mm -hmm. more, just naturally uncocking with the weight of the club going down, okay. rather than you holding on to it as much. Okay, cool. let's give it. Let's give it a go. Explore a couple of feels on it. I know what I want it to look like. Explore, explore my feelings. Jeez, well, that's got a bit deep. That come on, what is it? We have a golf lesson here. We're having nice and chilled as you. Like all this channel's now all about. It's just about exploring feelings. All right, it's just where about, we're at now. It's about exploring those feelings. To take the pressure off the wrist, would you? Do you think it would be better to be a fraction shallower through impact? Or do you think the grip with what we're doing now with these thicker grips and where you've changed the hand position is just taking all of it off it and that doesn't need to happen? I, I'm not. I'm not sure. I've I've never really been able to successfully shallow it without just 
drop kicking it. My thought here is if we think about this like you would when you're chipping and pitching, if you're still hitting down on it quite a lot, yeah. seven down, okay? Because you've got a lot of sort of wrist angles that are held and delayed coming in. But if we're getting you to push up a lot more, we should shallow that seven out more rather yeah, than yeah. it keep going down. So if we can get the push up, that means that the seven will flatten out, which would be good. Whereas when the knee stays bent, that seven's going to keep going into the ground a lot. How's that? Yeah, I mean, it felt shallow. It felt like a bit of a draw. That actually looks really good, that. All I was really trying to do on that, kind of same feeling coming through. Oh, that's way different from the front. Sorry, Carol. See so, how bent that knee stayed. Yeah. And how flat the shoulders look comparatively there to there. Mm. Okay. I mean, all I was really trying to do on that, I was trying to stand that a little bit taller, soften that right arm. I was just feeling I was more really kind of wider and straighter back. Yeah. Rather than taking a little bit out. Wide and straight, coming through, separate, extend. Okay. I mean, that's, it's a pure strike and it's clean. Look at the height difference on that. Holy sh moly. <laughs> <laughs> you had to save, hold back a little I saved that one. That was a definite save. <laughs> that wasn't your first time on camera, was it? Holy schmoly, <laughs> look at that, wow. Oh, look how straight that is, 0 0.4. No Face point, to no. path. Come on, Kieran. Look. Ding, 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 ding. Look at that ball fight. Look at I, it. I'm always a bit happier when I get zero feet of curvature. I can't, I'm a bit happier when I see that. Just want to so, thank Dan, just want to thank my family. Uh, <laughs> I want to thank you guys for being here to witness this. Yeah, how many shots did it take? About 10? Yeah, yeah. Well, I think and in my day, get, I can go and have a brew. You get 10 shots on every shot on the course anyway, don't you? YouTube rules. Yeah, I thought it was 11. Let's have a look at the 0, 0.0. So it, the backswing actually feels a lot better. It feels, not exactly more behind me, but it feels wider, a little bit less. Cramped. Yeah. And I'm not thinking I'm not thinking about shallowing here, just that separation and then extending up. Actually looks quite nice though. Yeah, and the setup just looks just looks like it's just a bit more athletic, doesn't mm. it? A little bit nearer to it. I like it. So that lesson with Dan, I think that was pretty informative as far as my swing was concerned and the changes that I'm making. But what about you? What about your games? If you are thinking of switching to a super fat grip like this, by the way, this is the actual Jumbo Max price in the Shambo grip. I've got this on my driver just so I can really feel the difference there getting it in my palm. There will be that technical change, but specifically these Jumbo Maxes, these are a very light compound. So it doesn't mess up the weighting of the club. Also, I really like the idea that there's more space to actually fit your hands on a grip. I think so many grips are too thin. You can get a grip fitting if you really want one. I think Golf Pride do one. But for me, the benefits of switching to a thicker grip probably outweigh not switching to a thicker grip for me. The biggest thing to sometimes overcome is just how it feels, because it does feel massive. <laughs> get down to those comments. Let us know what you think.